Coloring Our Lives is a collection of quotes and spiritual teachings of Supreme Master Ching Hai. In response to the questions and concerns of truth seekers, Supreme Master Ching Hai provides insights that are both spiritual and practical. Her suggestions light the way to creating a Buddha's pure land on earth, as well as being an intelligent, talented artist of life. As Supreme Master says, while making good use of every minute of our time to lead a fulfilled, positive, happy life in the process of learning, we can also use the very lively, animated and joyous spirit derived from spiritual practice to color our lives. Today we share with you the wise teachings of Supreme Master Ching Hai in excerpts from her book, Coloring Our Lives. Bless yourself with meditation. When we sit, we should relax. That's right. We should thank God for giving us time to rest. The other yoga schools usually refer to meditation as a time to relax. Nowadays, if you read newspapers or magazines, the regular ones, you'll find them mentioning meditation, or when they talk about how to live longer and healthier, they'll somehow mention that we must find time to relax, rest or meditate. They do mention meditation. Meditation is very popular now. They don't say, meditate to find God, but meditate to relax, to become healthier, feel better, live longer and be successful. That is, to be successful in every aspect, we must choose a time during the day to rest, not to sleep, but to meditate, or breathe in, breathe out, or whatever. Everyone knows about it now because science has proven it. If we choose a time during the day to rest or meditate, our bodies become healthier. One of the best methods is meditation. That is, choosing a time to meditate every day. Now all the magazines mention this. Meditation has been accepted by science and people worldwide, so don't make it sound so painful. Like, oh God, I have to meditate now. Otherwise, I can't attend group meditation, or the contact person will say this and that. It's not like that. It's good for you. It's a time for you to treasure. We've worked all day, busily taking care of the world and others. So whenever we meditate, that's a time for us. We must love ourselves first. Love others, but also love ourselves. Whenever we meditate, at that time we concentrate all the treasure onto ourselves alone, in order to nourish our body and mind. It's not because I say this and that, that you have to meditate enough, otherwise this and that will happen. No, it's very good for you. The most precious time for you since the moment you were born, and until you die, is meditation time. It's the best thing you do for yourselves. No one can give it to you. Only you can give it to yourselves. It's the best thing that you can do for yourselves. Meditation. While you do it for yourselves, others will naturally benefit as well. Your family, relatives, dogs and cats will also benefit. Trees and flowers will benefit too. I've already told you this. So when we meditate, the people and all the things around us benefit, but we're the ones who benefit the most. It's the best thing that you can do for yourselves, the best medicine to nourish your bodies, the strongest energy to nurture your brain, the best book to develop your wisdom. No matter how beautiful a car you have, how big a pearl you get, and no matter how expensive they are, they are not as precious as the time you spend meditating for yourselves. That's the most precious gem in the whole universe that you can offer to yourselves. Like one initiate said, 
Meditation is resting, nourishing ourselves, bringing in all the precious jewelry to beautify you. Who wouldn't want that? When our mind hears precious gem, it says, OK, or rest. It says, OK, I like it. I don't like work. Relax, man. OK, I'm ready. It's just the brain. Our brain only knows how to discriminate between good and bad, black and white. Work is a problem. Or job. Oh no, it's been working all day already. No, no, no. But if you say, OK, let's take a break, then it's OK. Our mind knows what good or bad, resting or working hard means. So whatever we say, it understands that way. We must teach it. Also, the cells in our body all listen to us. If you say it's good, then it's OK. And if you say it's bad, it thinks so as well. Therefore, Buddha said, all things are created by the mind. Our mind we must create. We must speak good things, think good things, and will change the negative to the positive. We teach the cells in our own bodies to think positively. Whatever good you think or speak, your mind, your body, and the millions and billions of cells in your body all listen to it immediately. That's why I say you are your own master. You don't need me. But you've forgotten how to teach yourselves. All day long you've been dragged down by the negative power, listening to bad stuff and then repeating this trash in your head. Whatever your mind hears, you let it think that way. Therefore, I've told you, don't listen to bad things, don't think bad things and don't speak bad things. That's purifying your actions, speech and thoughts. If you hear anything bad, stop and toss it out. If you've already heard it, then tell your mind, that's not true, she's wrong, don't listen to her. We tell ourselves so our mind understands. Ah, these things are false information, toss them out, trash them. Because if we accept it, our mind will think this information is okay, so it will record it, and later it will spit it out. All the good and bad things in our lives are created by us. We say good things and our mind takes them and thinks, okay, it's good. We speak bad things, and our mind hears them and thinks, OK, it's bad. So, who else is our master but we ourselves? For example, when you want to drink, is it you who tells your hands to get the water, or do you ask your neighbour to tell your hands to get it for you? And when you're hungry, is it your mind that tells you to look for food? Isn't it you who gives the order? And when you want to go to work, you must either look for a bus or drive a car yourselves to the office. We're our own boss in everything. Thus, we should direct ourselves with a positive perspective, in virtue and goodness, so that our lives will become better each day. The bad things that happen in our lives are all created by ourselves. If they weren't now, then they were in the past. We put them in here, but we forget to cleanse them out, and thus, they come back to harm us later. Therefore, don't blame anyone. From now on, whatever bad things you hear, you must tell yourselves immediately that this information is not true, is negative, is not good, and not beneficial to anyone or ourselves. Stop it. You must get rid of it immediately. When you go home, at night, recite the holy names to cleanse it out and in the morning, pockets a big reserve before you go out. Therefore, you should meditate in the morning and at night, when you come home. If there's some leftover garbage in your pocket from outside, meditate to cleanse it out. The more you cleanse yourselves, the better. The more surplus in your pocket, the better. So that when you run into some garbage, you can cleanse yourselves right then, so there's no need to carry it home with you. Taming the Human Brain 
don't make meditation a kind of work. It's just a relaxation time. Tell your mind it has nothing to do, and to just sit there relaxing. And if you cannot sit too long, you can lie down and rest. Make it pleasant. You can put a flower in front and wear some nice clothes. Make it like a ceremony if it feels good. That's why some people put out incense, flowers, and all of that, just to please the mind. Whatever it takes to make your meditation pleasant, you can do it. Have fun. Or maybe lie down and rest. Meanwhile, concentrate here, at the Wisdom Eye. Make it pleasant at first. Don't make it too hard for the mind, because he doesn't like it. He doesn't like working. And if you're too serious, the mind will rebel, thinking, I don't like that. I'd like to have fun. I'd like to go out. I'd like to have music or coffee with friends. I don't want to sit here. So just make it nice. Invite some good friends, initiates, to come to your house. Or come to their house, have coffee, chat first, or do something together, and then sit together, as if it is a part of the game, part of the fun. That's in the beginning. Later, you get used to it, and you don't need that game anymore. You can just sit anywhere and feel good. First, relax the mind. Most often, all of us are very hurried to become a Buddha, and that's why we have problems. We struggle between the soul and the brain. The soul wants to meditate, the brain wants to play. So we can reward it somehow. Like after you have a good meditation, give yourself some of your favorite food, take yourself out, or see your girlfriend, do something nice afterwards, so the brain will know, okay, that's good. Train the brain just like you train a dog. You know how to train a dog. When the dog does something good, then you give him a reward. That's how he becomes better and better. Our mind sometimes is a troublesome thing. If you really sometimes don't feel like meditating, then just leave it. Don't force yourself too much. Just do something else, running or doing some exercise. And when you're tired, then you will like to sit down and the mind will not make trouble. Actually, that is a problem when we are alone. Sometimes the mind tricks us a lot. And if we don't have someone to encourage us or to hold hands, we cannot continue so fast. That's why we need a teacher and friends, fellow initiates. Then we can talk out the problem with them, and sometimes they help. So try to go to group meditation as often as you can. You can talk over problems with your fellow practitioners, befriend them, invite them for coffee or tea to your house, and vice versa. Make it fun, and sometimes go out together, have fun. Go to the cinema and do something together, so that meditation will become part of friendship and fun. At first, for some people, it's necessary. You have to find out what your mind likes, and then give him a little. Don't be too harsh on him. Some people don't need it. They love to meditate, so it's easy. But even then, when we enter some stages of meditation, we sometimes get stuck there. We feel suddenly that we don't want to meditate anymore. We don't want anything like that. We've had enough with Buddhas, or enlightened beings, and things like that. But it's just temporary. Then later, when you have friends, you read some spiritual books and listen to some spiritual tapes, or even read some Buddha scriptures. Maybe that's going too far. But some contemporary books about life and death, about meditation, and about the experience of heaven by other people. And then you will be somehow more stimulated to want to have the same experience, and so you will make more effort. We have to find a way to do things that suits our pace of life, our style, our thinking, and also our habits. Habits are hard to change. We should do it slowly if we cannot do it fast. The purpose of meditation, realizing yourself and attaining inner bliss. Actually, when we're very happy, it's very difficult to meditate. And when we're very miserable, it's also very difficult to meditate. 
That's why we always try to strike a balance in between, so we don't feel such extremes that we forget that the real happiness is inside. Truly, it is. Actually, if we truly rely on the inner happiness, then everything will come. Then we'll never be disappointed or have to rely on anyone. If someone comes, it's okay. Or if they don't come, it's okay. We don't feel so hurt or pained inside. So all the pain, sorrow and misery come not from the outside, not from other people. They come from our inner ignorance. We expect too much from everyone and everything. And then we are disappointed. So the only source of happiness is inside. Whenever you meditate, try to get in touch with that source. For your sake, for your own happiness, contentment, satisfaction, you must always try to get in touch with that joyful center which is inside all of you. That is where the master power is. That is where every miracle in the universe can manifest. That's all loving kindness. That's where all loving kindness is born. That's where all the virtues, beauty, and the truth lying dormant there for you to discover. Otherwise, sooner or later, we all die and go where? Who cares? At least when we're living, we must live a very worthwhile human life. We should be happy and be able to carry on our life in a joyful way, because that befits our dignity as a human being, as the top ten of all the animals in this world. We're the top of physical creation. We don't know if we're the top of the universe yet, maybe not, but at least here, we're the top of creation. So we must carry on our life as dignified as a human being should be, and not be fearful of everything and stupid and in misery, especially when we have the treasure inside that we can always use. That's the only purpose of meditation that you know yourself and know what true happiness is. Not because the master says so, and you have to obey the master. You obey the master because it's good for you, but you must know why. You must know it's for you, not for the master. The master doesn't care. I don't care. If you don't meditate, you don't meditate. It's your life. I can't control you, and I don't want to. If you control someone else, you're bound to him or her. Just like the policeman with a criminal, they're both handcuffed. The policeman has to take care of the prisoner. I don't want to be in that position. So whatever I tell you is good for you. And if what you hear is logical and you know it, then carry on. Not because I force you or anything like that. It's an honor. It's a privilege. And it's the best fortune of our life to be able to know such a secret. It's not being forced. It's not a bargain. And it's not an obligation. It's the best of all privileges. The best of all luck. In thousands or millions of lifetimes. That we're being so easily shown such a door to liberate ourselves of all misery. So work on it. That's all there is to it. <laughs>